All right, guys, what is up? So today we are going to do a breakdown of a solo strategy, essentially. So I'll play a ton of solos. Um, this playlist specifically, the game we have here was a buyback solos, which I think they just took offline again last night or the day before that. So um, just slightly different than solos. You know, there's no gulag. You got to have 4,500 in your bank, you know, to buy yourself back essentially, um, which you can see here. It's why I start with 4,500. So um, we're going to run through this game. Um, pretty sure I finished second in this one. Yeah, second place. So um, it was a pretty good game. So you'll see as we go through some of the different strategies that we want to talk about and things that you all can do to improve your game. Um, so the first thing to think about with solos is, you know, you, you don't have any backup, obviously. You're by yourself. So what I like to do is always kind of play just a little bit more conservative than what I normally do. And you'll kind of see that here. Um, you know, you can't do a ton of rushing right into a gunfight because you don't have anybody that can, you know, pick you up if you get put down or you don't have anybody that's going to be there to back you up, you know, draw fire away from you, things like that. So, um what I always like to start the game with, though, is I'd like to drop into a hot area. You know, it's usually their superstore, airport, um, pick up quick kills, uh, you know, get some loot, try to find some guns. Eventually, I'll work towards a loadout. Um, and then along the way, I'm always working with UAVs and bounties, you know, going from kill to kill. You know, my, my objective here is to obviously win the game, you know, is the main thing, but also try to get as many kills as possible. Duh, we all know that. Um, but kind of the, what I like to do, and you'll see as I'm playing here, is I like to run through different areas of the map and hold down those areas. So you can see here, we're starting the game in Superstore. So we're gonna drop in down here. You can already see, obviously, there's quite a few guys going down here. I saw probably four or five people. So I'd always usually go back window or roof. So you can tell here there's a dude right next to me. So I grab this gun. Fight this guy. This dude actually somehow snuck away from me. So I saw this other guy. See, that was him right there. This other guy pops in now. So we're able to kill him. And from there, I just start looting Superstore. You know, I saw that dude run out. I haven't heard any other footsteps or seen anybody else around me, so I'm gonna pick up loot. So as I'm looting, I hear a gunfight going on. You know, again, I don't just rush right into it. There's someone to back me up. So I take care of this guy. And I can still hear somebody around me. So I know that was either the guy he was fighting or somebody else that was camping above or below. So I'm gonna check up high here. C4 didn't hit anybody. Dude jumped down. So he got the jump on me on that time. But obviously I had 4,500 in my bank, so I can buy myself back. So as I'm coming back in, I can still see there's a ton of kill streaks in that area. So I'm just gonna drop right back in. This time I go a little bit more on airport side instead of super storage. Again, those are kind of the two hot areas. You know, you're either down here in the hangars or up here more along the runway. So again, another thing to always think about with this is you want to try to get high ground. You know, once I ran out of there, I heard a gunfight going on over here. And as I'm running up, obviously they called a cluster strike in. They were calling it on the guy that was above me, but I was trying to go kill. You know, I have the bounty on here. So I'm kind of pinched right now, right? So there's a cluster strike going on. There's dudes around me. You know, I don't know exactly where he's at, but I know he's in this building. So again, this is me being a bit more conservative. You know, you hate to really be that guy that's kind of just chilling, but in a situation like this, you kind of force your hand. You know, so there's not much you can really do. So I know he's around me somewhere. I'm just kind of waiting. I want to be smart with this. You know, I know the bounty kill will be big. You know, get some extra cash. So here he comes. There's my bounty. Obviously paid off. Now I got 14 grand in the bank. So that was worth over 10k. And you can hear there's another dude that was chasing him. Reload, shield up. There you go. Two for one. Down. Awesome. Easy work there. Now we got over 16k. Now we can really do some stuff. So at this point, I ran back across the runway because the 
loadout dropped in. I wanted to get the high ground to really figure out what was going on around me. So you can see on the, the map up here, there was some gunfire going on by the loadout. There's the guy right there. And what we'll see here in a second, there was actually, there's a second dude down in here, and then there was a third dude back over here. So this area is super hot, like I said, you know, a ton of people come here, even though we're already a couple minutes into the game, we're already in the second circle. So pick that guy off. He was already pretty hurt from the gunfight, so that was an easy kill. From there, there's that original guy I saw run in. Throw some shots at him. Now's a situation where I want to push. You know, at that range, I'm not going to do much against them, which is the default ruin. So I'm going to hop up, grab the bounty. I'm hoping that the bounty I picked up is that guy, which originally I thought it was, but it was actually somebody up in the air. You'll see it move across the screen here in a second. So that threw me off for a second. So now I'm thinking, all right, let's go grab the loadout. As I'm doing this, that dude rushes me. Smart move by him. Poor execution, though. He gets fucking smoked. So at this point, I'm like, all right, let's hold down the hangers. You know, that, that's going to be my, my spot now. We know there's definitely some people over here. We can see them on the map. We knew it before we even jumped down. There was at least three, maybe four people over here. So now it's just a matter of finding them, picking them off. So you can see an enemy armor box or ammo crate right there. I would pick up somebody on the heartbeat. I use heartbeat in every Warzone class. It's just so clutch in situations like this. Help you give a layout of the field. So this guy's just camping in the corner. Easy kill. Tried to light me on fire. I mean, okay, you know, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> so, avoid the fire. Now I'll move back up into the building again. Try to get the high ground. We want to get the high ground, maintain the high ground. It's always going to give us an advantage. So as I'm coming up here, somebody, again, another thing to think about. So with buybacks, obviously, most of the time you're going to kill people. Like this guy right here. That's one of the dudes I just killed, literally. So people get pissed off as you kill them in buybacks. So what they try to do most of the time is just jump right back into where they are. So, you know, always just be aware of your surroundings and that, you know, when you kill somebody, they're probably going to come back to try to get you. You know, they want to get their revenge. You know, they're pissed off. Uh, but you can use that to your advantage. You know, if you, get, if you get a high ground, if you get a good vantage point like this, you, know, you can play that. You know, again, another thing circling back to it not being, you know, a team-based game here with it being solos. Um, normally, a situation like that, I'd rush in if I had people with me. But you want them to make the mistakes for you. You know, I have the high ground. There's maybe a 5% chance that this dude's going to kill me from this vantage point, you know, if I'm patient here. Um, so instead of just jumping down and risking it, you know, you just make him make the mistake. Let him come out. Eventually, he's going to come out. You can see another car is coming in. Which that actually takes that guy's attention away. You can see Enemy him hop in his quad here in a second. So I could have pushed a little bit if I really wanted that kill, but, but that, that, that kill wasn't going to make or break me. You know, he took off and he left the area, went after that car. So it wasn't the end of the world. At that point, I jumped down, got a UAV, because I had some money. Saw there was another dude that had came down in there. So I knew where he was at. He had been camping there for a minute. Be advised, UAV is being okay, I'm going to use the cover to my advantage here. I know where he is. He really doesn't know where I am. He just knows I'm in the area. So fake left, go right. Jump around. Just better gunfight there. Again, just use this area to your advantage, man. You know, I knew people were just going to keep coming here, so I just stayed in this area, you know. The circle was closing in on this area the entire time as well, so that, that really helped my efforts here. So you can see another guy popped in here, camping out, hit him with a nice C4 right here. No chance at this point. Rush in, clean it up. So at this point you got 16k in cash, you know, armor up. Now we're going to have to make some moves. One more guy here. The circle's 
as you can see, moving away from the hangars, moving more towards the airport. So I'm gonna have to make moves myself. You've got a loadout drop inbound. This guy, yeah, just no, you know, no chance. So I knew at this point, you know, it's crunch time here. All right, so the circle's moving in. We got eight people left in the lobby. So I'd seen this guy on my UAV right before it expired whenever I ran over here. I knew people were going to be pushing in from the airport, so I wanted to have this vantage point so I could play the backside. As you can see, he's trying to sneak up on me. Not smart. So the circle's pushing in on me. You got 20 seconds left on the timer. Always use the circle in this situation. You know, use the circle to push people towards you. You'll see here in a second, I did that perfectly. I knew people were going to be coming in. It's just a matter of waiting. You know, just wait for them to push in. They can't do anything but run forward. So that guy, he can't do anything. If he goes backwards, the gas kills him. If he comes forward, I kill him. So use that to your advantage. So at this point, we got five people left. This circle is really weird. It's out in the middle of nowhere. You know, it's, it's right in the middle of the runway. There's hardly any cover at all. So that made the situation a little bit more difficult than what I wanted it to be. So you can see here, I'm kind of just clearing the circle again. There's a loadout over there. I don't need it at this point, obviously. Um, so I'm kind of just waiting for somebody to show themselves, make the first move, try to get, you know, figure out where people's positions are at. Because at this point, I had no idea where anybody was. I knew that this wall was clear. I've been holding down this area. So that meant that there was a giant open area and then the other side of the runway. There's about 50 meters over there that I hadn't seen yet. So this circle is already starting to slowly move in. You spot one guy over here. Still, now we're down to four people. Somebody just gotten killed from the other side, I assume. I never heard the gunshots there, so I wasn't 100% sure. I just have seen this guy. So I'm double checking my, my rear here, make sure there's nothing there. So the gas is pushing in. So essentially, I just have this wall over here on the right hand side. And we know there's a guy over here who's going to push across. Because that's the only move he can make. That's him right there. It's just me, him, and one other guy. So I still haven't seen this other guy. Missed the first couple bullets there, that should have been a kill. So now, you can see, we'll back that up for one second here. This is my first view of that second guy. So there he is right there. So that's the guy I was shooting. That's the guy that hurt me, he was in that tent. So, now I know both the guys are in the same spot. In this situation, what I probably should have done was pushed up here and tried to throw in a C4 over. Looking at it in hindsight, I don't know if I would have had enough arm length, arm strength to get it over though. Good. Um, he was probably about 40 meters away, 50 meters away. So you can see here, the second mistake I made is I cracked him there. At that point, I should have rushed. Um, it's just a one-on-one -on -one at that point. You know, there's nobody else left in the game. I should have rushed that guy. You know, I could have maybe got in there, slid behind the loadout, and popped him real quick. I knew he was hurt. Although, that's some fucking bullshit. That probably should have killed him. Um, he had started his shield up, but I probably put four or five bullets in him with the growl right there. So, whatever, you know. He pops up, you know, and unfortunately he wins this gun battle. He has some cover right there that helps him out. I'm kind of floating out in the open. So, it is what it is. You know, it was still a really, really good game. A couple mistakes. That's one reason I love to record these. I love to look back and see, you know, what could have been done better in this, because you know you can use that to your advantage during the next game. Again, like I said, you know, probably should have rushed that guy. That's the one major mistake that I definitely made there. Um, but you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. So I hope you guys found this helpful. You know, I definitely, like I said, wanted to make something for you guys that was a good breakdown of you know strategy not just gameplay but showing you guys kind of what i'm thinking as i'm playing through these games um you know i'll probably do one of these in the future on a good quads game that we have um but again you know i always warm up with solos you know i play a lot of solos later at night whenever nobody else is on just to refine my game so um it's something that I'm doing a lot so i'm sure some of you guys are probably playing some solos so this is something to again keep in mind um, you know, this was a buyback solos game, so the strategy is slightly different, you know, with having, you know, enough money to be able to buy yourself back and no gulag, but, um, the general, you know, strategy of positioning, when to push, when not to push, 
when to use the UAVs, when to use bounties, you know, things like that. Those all still apply, and, and honestly, a lot of those concepts apply in, in quad games as well. So, um, if you guys like the video, definitely leave a like, uh, comment, subscribe to the channel. Um, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe on Twitch. Uh, you can go over there at Davy Deadshot. Make sure you can watch everything live with me. Turn on notifications for whenever I go live so that you can see all this stuff when it happens in real time. Um, and until next time, I'll catch you all later.